the history of Nepal, the small Niwa town of Kutipur is unique. Even though the founding of the town dates back to the 12th century and the time of King Shivadev, its true origin is probably far older. Discoveries that date back to the pre-Lichavi epoch indicate that it could be one of the oldest settlements in the entire Kathmandu Valley. In the course of time, and particularly under the reign of the Mala kings, Kotipur developed into a small independent town with several beautiful temples and sanctuaries. The design of today's Buddhist Kilandio Stupa dates back to the 16th century, but the original building is attributed to the Indian king Ashoka. Under the reign of this legendary leader in the 3rd century AD, Buddhism began to spread across the length and breadth of the Indian subcontinent. The many years of Kotipur's independence came to an end in 1482. This was when the town's inhabitants reluctantly came under the rule of the nearby city of Patan. In subsequent years, an increasing number of temples appeared on the ridge of the strategic and naturally protected town of Kotipur. The Bagbarava Sanctuary, an extensive 16th century building complex, is still worshipped by both Hindus and Buddhists. In addition to several ancient stone sculptures, the internal area of this temple site contains a rare depiction of the deity Shiva. Within the same building of the Ganesh Shrine, there are five sculptures of the region's mother goddesses that most likely date back to the 3rd century AD. A further important cult figure of the sanctuary is represented by the tiger. Legend associates the five mother goddesses revered in Kutipur in the form of sheep with this noble wildcat. Four of the sheep were killed and devoured by the tiger. Following the capture of the wildcat, the people cut off its tongue as punishment. Despite this colourful religious myth and many other legends that surround it, today the town is peaceful and serene. But it hasn't always been as tranquil as this. The town's temples and shrines have not hindered its population from offering military resistance when necessary.
1757, the conquest of the Tarn by Prithvi Narayan Shah and his Gurkha troops was initially thwarted by the people of Kotipur. But a second massive attack in 1766 finally led to the capitulation of the Tarn and to the gruesome punishment of its inhabitants. During the battle, the warrior chief's brother lost an eye. As punishment, the victorious troops cut off the noses of the defeated men. This somewhat bloodthirsty act of revenge gave the town the not so flattering nickname of Nascapetur place of the noseless. Today the town of almost 15,000 inhabitants is divided into two areas. The eastern section is predominantly inhabited by Buddhists. The upper part of the town consists mainly of Hindus, but both areas of the town are united by an idyllic rural atmosphere. Time does indeed seem to have stopped here. As in time-honored tradition, the town's women enjoy a casual chat outside their dwellings, as did former generations before them. Everything appears to be calm, but beneath Kurtipur's seemingly relaxed surface, there is an undercurrent of discontent. In 1990, the people of Kotipur rose against the absolute and boundless power of the king. A walk through the lanes provides those who come here with a variety of fascinating insights into the town's centuries-old trades and traditions. However, despite the impressive number of cultural and historic sites, the life of these people has for many years been dominated by poverty. This is due to the nearby Tribhuvan University that was founded in 1959. To enable its construction, the former land and property of the region's farmers was confiscated. Due to the declining economic situation in Kirtipur, the town's cultural monuments appear to represent the last ray of hope for its inhabitants and a much needed possible source of future income.